and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator in southern Tasmania. Um, I'm just checking my um, internet and everything is up to date. Just bear with me for a minute. Just uh, as a few people sign on, just make sure I've got proper volume. Yeah, sounds like I've got proper volume. Light looks pretty good. Excellent. Great. So just as a few people just sign on, uh, thanks for joining me. Please uh, pop into chat. Tell me where you're watching from. And if it's your first time, please uh, let me know that as well. I'll just find the chat there so I can watch them as they come in. Uh, excellent. So today I'm going to have a wee bit of a play with the So Very Merry uh, stamp set. Now, the So Very Merry stamp set came out in the most recent um, uh, release of our online exclusive. So it's not actually in your catalogue. So if you decide to pop through and have, try and find it in your catalogue, you're not going to be able to. It is actually just online. So if you pop online and you go um, through all products and then to online exclusives, you'll find this one there amongst our wonderful online exclusive um, offering. So um, it's a lovely Christmas themed stamp set. Seems a little bit early for Christmas, but I know a lot of you are already getting ready uh, for the next one for your Christmas cards and all those sorts of things as well. Um, but also I know everyone's, a lot of people are celebrating their Christmas in July as well. So, yeah, so it's been a good one to, to come out um, at well-timed for our online release. So we're starting to see a wee bit of Christmas appear, which is always a great time for um, decorations and, uh, and card giving, of course. And packaging, uh, gift packaging as well. So, yeah, so I thought I'd give this one a bit of a go. I'd actually been really, 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 really wanting to try these rosette decorations. I don't know why. I don't know that I can have them on my tree, but they just really appeal. And you've seen them also turned into sort of like um, ribbons and things for kids' sports carnivals and, and stuff like that, even though my kids are a bit old for that sort of thing now. But you see that sort of thing as well. So they've just really intrigued me how they how they were made. And as soon as I saw the circle um, stamps from this particular uh, stamp set, I thought that's definitely my chance to, to give this a go. So, yeah, but also it's a, a wonderful stamp set in the fact that it coordinates nicely with our new circle punches or our recently released circle punch this is the two and um, three eighth inch circle here um, so it coordinates pretty well with that um, plus the smaller ones if you've got the two inch one as well you can use that um, to cut out these cute circles anyway so let's uh, give a go we'll actually start making this rosette which is probably the, the highlight of this particular design I'll just pop those things out of the way. So I've got the camera up a wee bit higher than usual, so hopefully the focus is okay. It's just that I needed you all to see my full trimmer. So I'm hoping that I can work that way. Let's see. hoping I can work not that way because that's the wrong way for me. I always work with my ruler on my right-hand side. So hopefully you can see most of my ruler there and you've got to see what I'm doing. So what you need to do to start with this um, rosette is a piece of um, coloured cardstock. I'm using the uh, the the, uh, the um, Christmassy real red here. So that's what I'm going to make my rosette out of. So eventually I'm going to end up with two, two strips and I'm going to use inches. So um, just bear with me. I'm going to, this rosette is actually made out of two 11 inch strips of cardstock, both of them two inches high. And they've been obviously scored to within an inch of their death, of their life there. So, um, so that's what I'm going to end up with. So I don't have to score um, too many pieces of cardstock. I'm actually going to cut it to four inches wide because obviously two times two is four. And then I'll take it out to 11. And then doing it this way, I'll just need to score once rather than two pieces individually. So that's what I'm starting off with, four inches by 11 inches, which eventually will be cut in half to two inches wide. What we're going to do now is score this at every half inch. Okay, so every half inch between from one end to the next. So actually by saying that, I'm actually going to bring in my scoring platform instead. So here's me moving my um, 
camera so you can see my trimmer and then I'm going to bring in my scoring platform anyway. So hopefully you can see that. Yes, you can. So I'm going to line up my 11 by 4. I'll grab my scoring blade and I'm going to, as I say, score at every half inch. All the way down every half inch. Much easier with the um, scoring board than the trimmer in this particular case. Now this, when I looked at rosettes on Pinterest this is one method that I found um, of course as with many things I'm sure there's other ways of doing them so um, yeah if you've got a, 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 um, a way of making them that's different to this please please yell out so we've got our 11 inch piece scored every half inch so we'll pop that out of the way oh crash and we'll bring back my trimmer where did I put that? Where did I hide your trimmer? Trimmer, trimmer, trimmer. Is it somewhere in front of my face and I'm not seeing it? Here it is. Okay, so we go, as I say, the end result is we want two of these two inches wide and that's what we're going to do. Okay, so there we are. We have our two halves of our two halves of our rosette so now we need to fold them like a concertina up down up down up down up down I remember doing this sort of thing as a kid folding fans and things like that which is fundamentally what we're doing here we're folding two little fans and all the way to the end so that's one half and then same with the other half just giving them a wee squeeze every few folds just to sharpen those off I'm a wee bit earlier going live today. You guys may have noticed um, exciting day. Actually, our, we're having our very first Tassie, Tasmanian, Southern Tasmanian demonstrator get together. So we're having that um, a few suburbs away at the home of a, of a friend who's also a demonstrator. And uh, yeah, so it should be good. We've got, I think we've got like 10 or 12 southern Tassie demonstrators coming along and, and a few that have said that they just can't make it today but they'll come to the next one so hopefully that will be good um, we're only a little state and it's very easy to um, very easy to, to feel isolated sometimes so we thought we'd gather everyone together and see how we go okay so we've got our two concertinas there what we need to do is grab them and stick them together so We've got this one here where the Z is the the last um, my, uh, the last layer is sort of heading upwards. And we've got this one here where the last um, layer is headed downwards. Okay, so these are the two that we're going to glue together. So I am going to have to let my glue set a wee bit here. So um, we might just do this and then we'll go to our um, to our decoration now very merry oh so merry what is it so very merry stamp set okay so I'm lining those up and I'm gluing those together and of course my glue is going to slip as glue does there we are now what we're going to do is loop that around like a big oval and do the same at the other end and I think I can probably get away with doing that before I do that I'm going to add my little hangy thing because we're making it a, a as I say we're making a decoration 
And the best way I found to pop it in is to actually pop it into this second little fold here. But it does mean I'm going to have to let it dry before I come back to it. So I've got some of our silver trim here. I'm going to just cut, I don't know what that would be, 15 centimetres, something like that. Isn't it funny? I go backwards and forwards, inches, etc. but just enough so that I can loop it over and you get a nice size loop there. Okay, so then I'm going to add some glue, same as we did at the other end here. Going to lay our piece of oh, looped um, trim in there. And I'm going to get glue all over my fingers, but that's probably unavoidable. So just lay it in there flat. And then bring that other end in and I might pop some glue on that as well if I don't glue myself. Now, you got, you're saying to yourself, Julianne, you're making a horrible, horrible, horrible mess here and you're not wrong. Why aren't you using double-sided tape or snail? And the answer to that is that I tried and with the tension that's involved in this little end result, it came apart. So, yeah, so the permanent, um, what am I calling it, the permanent um permanency of the double-sided tape wasn't quite enough to keep this long term now obviously christmas decorations are just christmas and you might be happy that it comes apart at, at some stage but um but i wanted it to be a permanent fix so i've got that in there and hopefully it will stick in i might pop a weight on it just to make sure it does so i've got it all over my fingers let's get that off my fingers okay so that's what i've gone for there just to seal that in probably how could i have done that better probably could have done a combo of both sort of um sealed it in there with some snail and then added glue on top that might have been a good thing too but that's that's what we've got and I think that's going to be fine it's just made me a bit sticky yeah there you go whoever said that on Facebook great minds think alike yeah so Rebecca yes probably that would have been probably quite as good as well but glue on its own I found wasn't uh, not quite Snail on its own wasn't sufficient. So I am going to let that dry a wee bit now and we'll come back to make the magic happen with that and we'll do our cute little Santa and angel now. So I'll just put the glue away. Okay, so I've got some white here, white, just white scraps. Just finished cutting my fun, well, finishing cutting my fun fold class. I've up to 38 in my fun fold class at the moment. It's just got, it's grown so much and I'm so grateful. But I am contemplating putting a cap on it because it takes so much time and um, product to, to cut 38 classes. I think I'm probably going to put a cap of 40 on it um, going forward. So which means everyone who's popped their name in now is fine. But, um, yeah, going forward it might have to be. Um, capped a wee bit just so I can have some life here we go okay so this is our little Santa it's like a, a stained glass window which I, I think is the reason I really 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 like this stamp set because it's got this little stained glass, stained glass window appearance not just in the two circles but in the little um, gingerbread house the bells and the little bird as well so really cute I'm going to use my Santa I might grab a foam mat if you bear with me for a minute just so I get a nice a nice uh, complete stamping. So we'll do Santa here. 
actually thinking as well that this would be really nice um, dark with uh, embossed in black embossing powder, this image, just to get it really dark and really solid. Uh, I might do that later. As I say, got to get ready for, we're having our, as I say, we're having our get together in a couple of hours. So I um, am just going to make this version today and maybe make another one later. So that's our Santa. And then the other one I'm going to stamp with our little angel just so you can see her. Colour our little stained glass windows with my blends. I've got my blends here. There we are. And with the foam mat, even the um, photo, what do I call it? Photo polymer stamp set stamps really, really well. Okay, so let's do Santa first. So Santa, the sky around Santa is going to be combinations of my light and dark Knight of Navy. Santa's suit is going to be dark real red, of course. His sack is going to be dark wild wheat. And I'm just going to pop some ivory onto his um, that little bit of face that you can see there. So let's get started. We'll do the, the background first. So as I say, just alternating each of these segments in light and dark, light of navy. This is the dark one. Um, I've got all silent, haven't I? Apologies, I'm just enjoying my colouring in, concentrating on that. That's his sack there, so don't go too much further, Julianne, or you'll regret it. So that's the dark. Let's bring in the light. So just the sky behind him if that's what we're saying it is just in light i was thinking about this uh, ornament design you could you could um, put circles you could put stars or baubles and things like that make a bauble with a bauble on it if you were that way inclined it's a lovely round um, design so a little stamped bauble would be great um, yeah whatever Christmas images you've got at home you can always pop onto a circle even though they're not if they're not on circles you can put them on a circle and put them on this decoration okay so that's that's the sky around Santa there Santa suit and hat. The end of my little red is a bit matted there, so I'll go to the texture end. Oh, trying to be a bit hard, fast today. I'm going off the edges. Should have a lovely time at our demonstrator meeting, uh, meet, uh, get together this afternoon. I've create, I, um, designed a card. A fun fold card and I've cut it all out and all with our bling and everything so the ladies who come along will get to craft a card 
and um, yeah, we'll have some afternoon tea and yeah, it should be a lovely chance to get together and talk and catch up and support each other and network and all those things. Um, yeah, so if you're in Tassie and you're a demonstrator and you've RSVP'd, it's a bit late if you haven't RSVP'd, love to see you there today. Well, you can come. It's just I've only made enough kits for the people who have who are definitely coming along. Anyway, there's an event on our Tassie page if you would like to have a look and see. There we go. So that's his Santa sack and his robe stump. Okay, I'm over to one side, aren't I? I have to move a wee bit. Uh, and his face, just a wee bit of ivory on his face there. Now I'm leaving his beard and his um, the lining on his hat and his gloves white. So that's all the colouring I'm doing for him there. Okay. Okay, so I thought just to give him a little bit of extra specialness I would bring in my wink of Stella and I'm going to wink of Stella treatment to the bauble on his hat the um, the sort of the white trim of his hat and I thought just to make it a bit special just to the sky around him so this is just my wink of Stella that might be on its last legs I think so hopefully I will be able to show you that bling that extra little shine in a second give it a bit of a squeeze got to be careful with your wink of Stella if you squeeze a little bit rigorously and I've learnt this from painful experience. It can all come out in a big, sparkly, gluggy mess. So I don't recommend being too, too, um, too much with that. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. It's got a wee bit of shine to it. Can you see that? I think you can. Yep, there we are. Okay, so that's our Santa done. So we'll pop him aside for a second. We'll bring in our angel. Now, how did I colour our angel? Now, I gave the angel the same coloured sky in the background, so our light and dark night of navy. Now, I found it a little bit tricky to, to work out what was angel and what was sky, but we'll work it out as we go. So this is my light night of navy. I'm just copying where I popped it on my original because I've worked that out. So again, I'm going to try and alternate light and dark where I think the sky is. Now we have um, pretty much closed uh, seats for our my um or Jan and my uh, stamp camp our beautiful balloon stamp camp if you did miss out you can grab the pdf so the pdf has all the measurements products measurements preparation instructions and links to um, videos to show you how to pop the cards together so you can grab that. That's uh, twenty dollars um, plus any applicable taxes. You can pop over to my Etsy store and purchase that. If you'd like a link, please reach out, or you can pop over to my Facebook page. There's a link there. So basically, yeah, you just um, you can buy the PDF and then you can make the cards, um, you know, at your, in your own pace using your own products. Well, it should be a good day, everyone who has signed up. We've got some really good prizes. 
Um, it'll be lots of fun crafting. I suppose that's the main main event for crafting. Um, but there'll be uh, prizes and games. We've got some really good games worked out. It should be a lot of fun. should have been one of these things I did before but anyway that's all good not a lot left to color now you might decide you want to put an angel on both sides or Santa on both sides but I really wanted to show you both image both images so that's why I um I basically did did one on one side and one on the other so just because they're colors that I've got it out already I'm going to give the angel the dark wild wheat hair you can have your angel whatever color of hair and skin or whatever it is you want and because I've already got the ivory out I'll give that all on her face and hands and again I'm going to leave her wings and her dress her robes uh, white so there's our angel and I might bring back the Stella. Let's give her a bit of Stella on the sky as well. Oh, no, I put the Stella on her wings. We'll put Stella on her wings. That's nicer. So she's got some sparkle there. just adds a little bit of extra something just picks up the light a little bit there we are you can see she's got a bit of sparkle there as well okay so I can get rid of that now okay so we've got our two images for our oh hang on haven't quite finished our angel I was going to grab because I want to do to punch her out using my I got it out using my two inch punch oh, that's my two and three eighths where's my two inch no that's not you here's my two inch I want to punch out angel out with our two inch punch and if I pop it in there you can actually see oh bad timing oh no that's okay did I use two inch punch on her must have okay so I'm going to use a two inch punch she says rewinding real quick on the angel and so I'll just position her in the middle there try and lose as little of her as possible and punch that out now you do lose a little bit of the edge of the angel now you can and with the Santa I'm going to do a different way but if you just wanted to use your punch that's what you'd get if you use a two, and I'll show you if I pop that in there, if you use the two and three eighths punch, you, you get the whole edge, but you get extra as well. So it is a wee bit too big, I think, I found. For what we're doing anyway, that's a wee bit too big. So we've got our little angel there. Now Santa here, I'm going to Santa, I'm going to cut Santa out with one of the circles from our stylish shapes just to show you the sizing. So using the circle out of the stylish shapes, I think it's this one. Here we are. That's I'm going to cut Santa out with that. Grab my little machine. This also gives him a nice little stitched edge as well. So to position that so it's roughly central it's a bit tricky you can't see the edge I'll pop that through hopefully that's sort of central oh yeah not too bad so there's our Santa cut out so you can choose you can just use the punch and maybe lose a wee bit or you can use the 
a die like that and um, get a bit more of that circle. Okay, so hopefully our little rosette is all dry now so we can um, be a little bit rough with it because that's what we need to do. I'm going to have to put it into position, just moving my um, emboss out of the machine, out of the way. We've got our two little decorations there. Let's bring back our, deco our rosette. Yep, so that's nice and dry. That's in there nice and firm. Okay, so... This is the bit that people said to me they have trouble with. So let's see how I go. Make sure these are all nice and sharp. So I've got my little um, hanger coming on the outside. So that's going to have to be the outside of my rosette. What you need to do is, what you need to do is, she says, force it into a flat position like that see oh, I did it okay so you're basically flattening it with your hand and as I say you have to be a little bit rough it's, it's tough love you're forcing it into a circular position so just firming it down so sort of taking it from that sort of um, sort of upright positioning to downright just forcing it and just gently bringing it downwards like that. And that's where you end up with the, the rosette sort of thing. If I let it bounce up now, it basically just goes like that again and you can just firm it down, okay? So you've got it like that. If you firm it down with both hands to a flat position and then bring it in as much as it will in the middle so that that little hole in the middle is as tiny, 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 tiny as you can get. Okay, so that's how we get the rosette into the sort of horizontal plane. Now we're going to have to make it stay there. So I've got some Knight of Navy cardstock and I've got my nice big two and three eighth punch. So I'm going to punch two circles of our Knight, Knight of Navy. like so. So one's going to go on the top and one's going to go on the bottom or one's going to go under Santa and one's going to go under the angel. What we need to do before we do anything else is grab some glue and give one of these circles some pretty major glue treatment action. Some pretty major glue action. So whereas normally you know me, I... Um, I use the minimum glue and minimum dimensionals and minimum everything that I can get away with. With this one, we're going pretty over the top. And as much as it triggers me, that's the glue. Okay. Fair bit of glue on there. Okay, so let's bring back our little decoration. What we do is force it back down into its horizontal position. You're going to hold it there. Now, this is where you need three hands. So if you've got a helper somewhere close that you can call, I don't. You might call them at this stage and say, hey, come and give me a hand with this. So I'm going to force it into, keep it as, I wish you could see under my hand, but you can't. I force that hole, little hole in the middle as small as I possibly can. I bring in my little disc of Knight of Navy and I place it with all its glue, with its crazy glue on the top of there. Now, I am going to have to hold it in so that it's as um, tiny, that hole is as tiny as it can possibly be and I'm going to have to hold it um, with the so that the disc, the, the circle sort of, contacts as many of those little zigzags as it possibly can because logically it's just sticking to the to the mountains of that design if that makes sense so I'm going to have to hold that and give it some love until that starts to cure off now with my other hand these things are incredible I don't know when I was at 
uni, we talked about how the strongest, because I did mathematics with engineers, so engineers were into this sort of thing, um, the strongest shape in, in nature or in, is a triangle. So this little thing is like so many multiple triangles in there that it's so strong. So this is one I made before. You can squeeze that. You can put quite a lot of force on it and it will not collapse. This is like the strongest thing you've ever seen. You could put, I don't know, you could park a car on it. It's amazing. So that's just me being a bit geeky there, but that is just amazingly strong. There is no way you're going to be able to flatten that. Well, you probably could. You'd run a car over it, I'm sure. But anyway, I might try after Christmas or try running a car over it. So anyway, there you go. If you wanted to know, that's a fun fact. You're probably all rolling your eyes going, oh, my goodness, what have I tuned in on? So I've turned that over. That's sort of cured off a bit now, so I feel that I can quite comfortably lift my hands away. So and... It's good to see that when I take my hand away, it doesn't move too much. So that tells me that at least that side is glued, is starting to cure. So before it changes its mind, I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the other side. Glue overload. Now this may work with um, double-sided tape or snail on there, but I really prefer the glue for its permanency okay so I've positioned the other one on the other side I'm just going to try and get it central and I'll hold that for a little while as well okay that one shouldn't need as much firming because we've already got that pretty stuck and that is already so strong that is amazing. I wonder if I could stand on it. Not this one because we're making it, but I wonder if I could make one and stand on it. I wonder how strong it actually is. Here you go, science project. And I wonder if it would get less strong if you made it bigger or would it be more strong if you made it smaller or vice versa? Wouldn't it make any difference? Hmm. That could be a bit of a science experiment. I was joking with my husband that now he's no longer working at the university. He needs to find science experiments that he can do at home. So maybe we'll make that a science experiment for Stephen. Okay, so there we are. That's all together. So, yeah, so we ended up with that cylinder that was sort of all pointing up like that. We've gently cupped it over. It's almost like when you're doing pottery with a pottery wheel. So we've sort of gently sort of pushed it over into the, the flat position and then we've sealed it with those two circles of Knight of Navy there, top and bottom. And that is fine. And that little hangy thing, that's not going anywhere either. So that's awesome. Very happy with that. Okay, so now we the, 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 that's pretty much over and done with. We can start put our little de um, decorations on. So we've got our little circle with our Santa. He's going to pop on this side. Again, we've got some more glue. Not quite as much. Now that's going to hang upwards that way because that's where a little um, hangy thing is. So I'll pop that on there so he's the right way up. Yeah, so that's the Santa side. Flip it over and we'll use our little angel. So the angel, I'll bring the other angel one I made in and show you in a sec. Did an angel with a silver backing, which was really nice. So I'll show you that in a ticket. But there we are. So that's our little angel as well. As I, say, I just want to show you both images. You might decide to put Santa or whatever on the same side on both sides. There's our little angel. Okay, and there's Santa, and there's an angel. Okay, so just a wee bit of bling, just because, you know, Wink of Stella is great, but, you know, 
there's, you can never have too much. I thought I'd pop some iridescent gems on both sides. Where's my little tool? Where's this? Ouch! Just spoke, poked myself. Okay, so we'll just pop some little gems. Just I thought it would make it look like it's a sort of a starry sky almost. Sort of go for that sort of look. Those on there. And then the same on our little other side there with our angel. And one more. And look where she's got her hand. I don't know if you can see she's got her hand extended like that. It's just begging for me to pop a little star, a little gem on there like that. Okay. So there is my little hangy Christmas decoration. I think that's really nice. hope you enjoyed that one. I really will um, have to... Uh, I really will um, have to give that a bit more try with a few more variations of the, the, the images and the thing. I thought I might make my kids some, um, some uh, what do we call it, some ribbons, you know, sort of place ribbons, you know, first place, second place, that sort of thing. I thought I might, you know, just with a star or something, I thought that might be cool as well. Maybe when my, young, my eldest turns 30 next year. So there we are, that's Santa. So I'll just show you the other one I made if I can find it. Here it is. So this one I sort of just I um, concentrated purely on the angel. Um, so here she is with a black. Again, I've just stamped her in black and coloured her in um, the same way. I put her on a silver um, disc rather than a blue one. So that's quite cute. The paper I've used, just in case you can see that, I'm not sure that for the rosette itself, this is actually shimmer paper. And it comes in um, all the in colours. So this is the balmy blue shimmer paper. And you can see there that one's come undone. That's where I use double-sided tape. It's shimmer paper and it does have, excuse me, I'm going to do this. <coughs> Bless me. It has um, exactly what it says on the box. It does have a shimmer to it, which is really, really nice for, um, for this decoration style. So there's our angel worn silver. And then I thought, how would she be embossed in silver embossing powder? And there she is. So, yeah, I, I, I liked it in theory, but I didn't like it in practice because I thought it really took um, it took a little bit of the stained glass window look away from her. But anyway, so oh, she was done on vellum as well. So um, silver embossed on vellum and then coloured on the reverse side. So that one there. Okay, so very various combinations you can do. We can do just plain with black or we can emboss or, as I say, we can pop our Santa just in black as well. Okay, so hopefully you like those. I'll pop that one. That's my favourite. Oh, no, this is my favourite. So hopefully you enjoyed those and you give the mood it a go. Um, I know we've got six months till Christmas, so you've got a while to uh, to think about how you're going to decorate those. But as I say, that stamp set is a really nice little Christmas starter set just to get yourself going. The, the Santa and the angel, the bell, bells, the house, gingerbread house and the bird. And then we've got sort of circular themed um, sentiments very um, very merry and they sort of obviously to match the circle of the uh, the little the little um the circle images there and oh what fun and tis the season to be jolly so yeah really really nice like this one I'm gonna use it a lot anyway so thanks very much for joining me I'm gonna head off now and have a shower and get ready to head out for our um, southern Tassie demo meeting or get together it's going to be so good uh, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed those and you'll join me again uh, next time so okay guys I'll see you later